Watching TV has changed over time. Streaming has become the new norm. That's why Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast dives headfirst to the world of cord cutting. Want to be on the loop of what's hot in Netflix? Or if it's not a preference, what about original shows in Hulu? We've got you covered. Join us as we fill in the blanks and talk about movies to stream and what show you should be binging. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast. Hello, good night, everyone, and thank you for tuning into the GSMC TV show podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Priscilla Welch. We're almost done again with another week, and I'm here to give you updates on groundbreaking history that was made in the past few days and upcoming television worthy shows that you must watch ASAP that is related to Halloween that will be coming up later in the show, so stay tuned for that, as well as If you can't decide on what to watch anymore, I have a whole list right here for you. So here we go. Let's get started. So first, I want to talk about, again, like I said, groundbreaking history that has recently occurred on SNL, a.k.a. Saturday Night Live. And the show has actually been going on for the past 40-something years now. Their anniversary is soon to start, actually, because the show first aired Uh, I believe, October 11th, 1975. So it's been a while. And if you have never heard or never watched SNL, this is the show you want to be on if you are an upcoming comedian or if you are already an established comedian, you literally will do this show and become a legend. Like so many celebrity guests, so many hosts, so many comedians have have appeared on this show. So first of all, Again, stay tuned later because I can give you the top TV episodes to watch right now to get in the mood, like I said, for Halloween. And up first, SNL just hired their first black lesbian cast member. Let me say that again. Their first black lesbian cast member. This is a big deal. Now, she is only the first one as being out there right away. Like, she's not keeping it secret that she is a lesbian. There have been other women from the 80s on the show that were probably black and was a lesbian. I'll get more into that later or just lesbian, but they were not out. I mean, comparing the 80s to comparing the era that we have now is just amazing because you see the differences, you've seen the transitions of what being gay, being bi, anything queer has done over the years and it's completely different and it's more accepted these days and this is what we want because this is how it should have been from since the beginning so the cast member is punky johnson and she will now join as well kate mckinnon and bowen yang who also are part of the lgbtq community so the cast is becoming more and more diverse which we love the show will actually air October 3rd on NBC and this will be the first um, again season with more diversity in LGBTQ so yes uh, to watch this you can have you can have cable to watch the show or you can watch it on NBC the app and the cast member she is from New Orleans and she describes herself and I quote brutally honest southern lesbian unquote she is a comedian actress and a writer fans if you have seen her before it may have been at the comedy store in LA and last year she was actually at the 2019 last festival in Montreal she also appeared in Space Force on Netflix uh, The Ride which is a Sundance film 2019 the dance part of the HBO comedy series in a black lady sketch show 
and I believe she was like a dancer. But she, um, like I said, was not the first black lesbian on the show, but the first one that was completely out there. The first one was actually Denitra Vince, and she was on the show from 1985 to 1986. Then we also have Lauren Holt, who is also an actor, comedian, singer, songwriter, improviser, and we also have Andrew Dismukes. Andrew Dismukes actually was a staff writer from since season 43 on the show, but now he will be part of the cast as well, which is amazing because it's one of those cases where you've been with the company, you've been on the show for so many years, and now finally you're like an official cast member. It's amazing. And of course, he probably wouldn't do um, a horrible job anyway, because he probably wrote a lot of the different skits and everything on the show since he was a staff writer. So it's amazing. SNL is also a show that comes on late night. So if you are a fan of comedy, laughs and entertainment, a lot of celebrities, mainly comedians are on the show. And honestly, these days, who would not need a good laugh? I mean, seriously. Recent news as well. We also found out the fabulous and the phenomenal Jim Carrey will be playing Joe Biden on SNL. Of course, we all love Jim Carrey. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I watched the Truman Show movie. The ones where he was like, like the person with the animals, like, and he was like the detective. I can't think of the name right now, but that was also a really good movie. I mean, I love Jim Carrey. Okay. I love him. Uh, Eddie Murphy is also a lot of times a host and a guest actor and comedian, of course, on the show so many times. And guess what? Finally, he has received an Emmy for it. So it's just amazing how far he has come, especially with all them kids. (laughs) So again, the show has been on for four decades. It's all about the current pop culture. It will have skits, it will have digital shorts, and satirical news. So a lot of times, too, this show is known for making fun of the current election. And this show is definitely going to be trending in November. It's already trending right now, and it didn't even come out yet. But the new season is definitely something that everyone will be looking forward to, especially because the way the election has us voting from mail and with the ballot and everything like that. And then we have Joe Biden and we have um, President Donald Trump. So it's very interesting to see what these comedians also like think and what they write about. And at the same time, it's like make it so much for the audience to enjoy, but not to be offended at the same time. I mean, there's probably those of you out there who probably do get offended even by something that's made made to be a joke. It all depends on the person. You know, you have to have an open view. I think if you're going to watch something like SNL, you really do You have to have an open mind. So the show has, again, been on for four decades. So many comedians, so many celebrities, Jimmy Fallon, Tina Fey, Chris Rock, Will Ferrell, Kate McKinnon, Seth Meyers, Eddie Murphy, Bill Murray, Mike Myers, Amy Poehler, Maya Rudolph, Andy Samberg, Kristen Wilg, Steve Martin, Alec Baldwin, Melissa McCarthy, Keenan Thompson. And again, like I said, first episode aired October 11, 1975. So again, their anniversary is coming up. I wonder how many years it is. It didn't count, but that's a long time. It's a very long time. And I'm so proud that Punky Johnson will be that representation, open doors for other people in the LGBT community that's just like her. And I would love to see even more like gay black men on this show as well, because I feel like if you can own your sexuality, it's amazing. You know exactly who you are, you know what you want, and you're not letting anyone tear you down for it. I I think that is beautiful, beautiful. I also want to talk a little bit more with uh, Jim Carrey. Like Jim Carrey is one of those actors and comedians where I feel like he's such a legend, like especially like uh, Eddie Murphy. And I feel like a lot of times, like in this generation, or at least in mine, they don't seem to appreciate the legends too well. And I'm happy that Eddie Murphy and Jim Carrey are coming back on the show. I think it's been a while since both of them actually have been on the show. And I feel like it's about time they come back because, I mean, I'm sure they've done, you know, other projects and stuff like that. But SNL is kind of like, I, in my opinion, where 
comedians can actually feel at home because they can actually get along with other comedians and kind of join in with the creativity and just to see what everyone is about, you know? And I feel like that's very important that comedians actually have like a top show where it's a go-to type of thing, especially when you've already made it. I mean, Kevin Hart has been also on this show like many times. We all know who Kevin Hart is. And so I think it's very, very important because a lot of times, if you're going to go see a comedy show, I personally never even seen one live, and I would love to one day. But for all of you fans out there of these different actors and comedians, a lot of times, if once they're known, we will see them in a movie. We will see them probably, if they're lucky, on a TV sitcom. But to have a show like this, where they can just go out there and be themselves, I don't think you get a lot of that in anything with the TV industry field or just being a comedian in general. I mean, I feel like being a comedian is like one of the hardest jobs besides acting and besides just being in the TV entertainment industry because a lot of people don't want to like like sit there and, and listen to stand-up anymore. It's more like everything is streaming now. So I noticed like even like comedians like Dave Chappelle, uh, they're literally making moves where with like Netflix and like other companies to like have a show again. But sometimes some of them are doing it a little different. I mean, it's still stand up though. I know Eddie Murphy also came out with another show as well, um, Dolomite, which is also on Netflix. And um, to see that his art, his craft is still there when you watch the show, it's it's very interesting. So. I feel like people need to remember that, again, watching a show like this, you really have to be open-minded and you really have to like take the time to actually learn from it too. I feel like it, it, it teaches you in a certain way because to them, everything is kind of a joke. <laughs> Seriously. And uh, I was reading this article in regards to Punky Johnson. She said that even as uh, a kid, going to Catholic school, she would always make fun of like the nuns. One time she even mooned, um, someone in the school, like someone in authority actually. And, um, she was, this was actually in an interview that she recently did, um, a couple months back, but she literally said like everything to her is a joke. Think of her as a a grown up child with bills. (laughs) I mean, just imagine thinking of yourself like that. And I really admire comedians because they have the guts to also make fun of themselves because if anyone tries to make fun of them, they are kind of at that point or at that edge in life or somewhere in their brain where it's like, all right, well, I'm a comedian, so I'm already used to the jokes and the laughter and everything. And she used to get in trouble a lot too when she was younger. And I'm sure like other comedians, if you do your research, have the similar stories as well. Like they were always like known as bad kids. They were always rebelling. They were probably be like the class clown in class. And like for those of you out there listening, when you are considered a class clown, a lot of people don't take you seriously. But it's almost as if nowadays I feel like parents can't tell their kids, hey, um, stop playing video games all day. Like you're not going to go anywhere. You need to like study your books and read and stuff. And then you, you sit there and you're like, wait a minute. There are like a lot of kids, though, that are probably making way more money than your parents. (laughs) I mean, seriously, just playing video games on YouTube. And so the next time you see a class clown, I mean, you never know. That class clown might actually be a next comedian. So, hey, don't make fun of nobody. Don't judge. Okay, this is a new era. This is 2020. We're almost in 2021 if we make it. So it a lot of things that like growing up, even for me that you used to see before and, and, and think of, and it's just not the same anymore. So coming up next, we will be talking about the Emmys. So I want you to stay tuned. Okay. This is the GSMC podcast network group. You don't want to miss it. 
Want to know the latest and hottest music hidden the airwaves? Don't be left out. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Music Podcast. Keith keeps you on the loop with everything you need to know from pop, rock, hip hop, and the top 40. And we'll throw in news of your favorite artists, concert and tour dates, and so much more. Listen no further because this is the gold standard in music podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome back from break. So if you're now tuning into the episode, we just finished talking about the beautiful show called SNL, Saturday Night Live, and how the new cast member, Punky Johnson, is the very first black lesbian uh, female on the show, and the show will be airing October 3rd. Uh, She is the first black lesbian female to be out already when it comes to the show, but not the first black lesbian female on the show based on the 80s but without further ado i would like to now get into the emmys okay for those of you who love 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 tracking celebrities uh watching a lot of movies watching a lot of tv shows the emmys is definitely the award show that you would want to see to see who gets nominated to see who actually wins and who actually gets appreciative of their craft i feel like i'm one of those people even from a kid that has always watched and always kept track of at least of my favorite actors, actresses, and singers and musicians. And I would watch shows in regards to the BET Awards, uh, AMCs, the VMAs, Emmys, Oscars, Grammys, you name it. I will be watching. Even the Tony Awards. Um, Just because I've always been, I always admired anything that had to do with the television world the movie world, acting in general, and music. So if you're a fan like me, a lot of, lot of different content has been out this year. I mean, I've just been surprised left and right. Again, like later even in the show, I will mention to you different TV shows that are coming up and it's just nonstop. And it all depends, of course, on your preference and your genre and what you like. So if you like to sit back and relax sometimes with your family and watch some award shows, then this is the show for you. So, of course, though, we have to be real. The Emmys in the past has not always been so diverse. It's only recently because of all the different political movements that have been happening and not to get political with you all, there has been a challenge among people who are in these industries and a lot of people of color. And when I say people of color, I mean African American, Asian American, Latino American, and so much more. And there's a lot of underrepresentation. And it's weird because we have a bunch of TV shows and movies out there with such great content and great chemistry amongst the characters and the actors and such a great storyline that. It's really disappointing when you're rooting for that actress, you're rooting for that actor, and they don't get nominated at all, and they don't even receive the award at all. So actually, recently, they had did a study of how the Emmys has literally given 80% of its nominations and awards to white performers. And this is true, you know it. Again, 42 men and women, though, in total this year were nominated and who were of color. So things this year really has started to change, thank God. But some nominees we have are Billy Porter for Pose, Zendaya for Euphoria, Sandra Oh for Killing Eve, and Rami Youssef for Rami, and many more. So NBC News has finally admitted, though, for the past 10 years, the Emmys have awarded 80% of white performers, 15% to black performers, barely one to Middle East or North African regions. Barely, barely 1%. And it is under 3% for Latinos and near 2, near 2% for Asians. And 
Pacific Islanders. So it's amazing to see the numbers. There was also some charts as well that you can actually even look up yourself if you're listening and it will show you like the graphs of the numbers that I just said and I can repeat it again. So it is 80% of white performers, 15% to black performers, three for Latinos, 2% for Asians and Pacific Islanders and barely one to Middle East or North African regions. It is very significant in this time, especially in 2020. 2020 has been a big year with so many different things. More doors are open to other races to have better opportunities, especially on award shows. For any of you out there, we don't even have to be a celebrity. We don't have to be an actor, actress, singer, dancer, whatever it is in the arts. We don't have to be famous. But wouldn't you feel some type of way if you worked hard all day and You've been working maybe at a company for years and years and years and years, and then you never get appreciated of it. Wouldn't you feel a type of way if you don't get promoted? Wouldn't you feel a type of way if you don't get any type of benefits at all from your job, whether it's like medical or vision or anything like that? I think it's very interesting if you would feel like you're just unappreciated at work. And so... Just imagine if you were in one of these actors, one of these performers' shoes, and you're sitting there, and you already know that there's racism in this country, but there's racism as well in your profession, in your field, and that's anywhere that you go. And of course, you're just sitting there, you're sitting there, you know, this is something that people have worked on for a whole year, and they literally put their hardest into their craft. It's already hard as it is, first of all, in these type of industries because it's competitive. Like me personally, being in radio, being in podcasting, I would say the same thing, just a little insight, a little personal insight where you're literally competing with so many other people that probably have the same talent as you, but at the same time, everybody wants to know who can they hire, who can do better, who would actually put in the work and take anything that comes their way. If you have a show that's going to be at 2 o'clock in the morning, are you going to take it? Or are you going to beg for something at 5 p.m. because it's a better time for you? No, you have no choice. In these type of positions, in these type of industries, anything with entertainment and media, we have to remember that not only do we have to be humble and take whatever comes our way, but set standards for yourself as well. Set expectations, set goals. Because you can take anything coming your way, but you still have to remember to have respect for yourself. It's all about your higher self. Getting into uh, the Emmys now. So it's very significant. Right now, HBO's Watchmen alone is starring Regina King, of course. And it leads 26 nominations alone. Because this show also came out before all the protests, before the pandemic. And... It really focuses on the American racism that has affected both sides of a lot of things that has happened in the past where it was still segregation laws, for example, where racism was so out there that you literally were still being called certain names. Like, that's how bad it was. And this show really, really, really reflects the trauma that the victims have been through. And I think this is really important because this show does not sugarcoat anything. And we live in a country, we live in a time where it's like, what is the point of still sugarcoating? Do not walk or do not drive and do not go to work or do not go to school thinking that, yeah, everything's okay. I mean, it's the real world. Let's be real people, okay? And not to be a Debbie Downer, but hey, this is what it is. So the nominees actually were introduced in late July. So people like Frank Shermer, he is actually, um, and another spokesperson there, we're talking about how important it is in the television industry alone to induct more representation for all. And there is a lot more work to be done. So they were saying, for example, um, in LA, literally more than half of the population is Latinos. And they think it's sad how Latinos are not even nominated, at least like a good percent 
that is literally respectful to the Latino community. And you have all these different shows and, and, and movies that, that are, that have Latinos in it, but it's only maybe if they're lucky two or three actors, actresses, and most of the time men that actually will maybe get an award for something or just nominate. They probably wouldn't even get the award at all. But these days it's like what I've noticed in this industry, as long as you even get like nominated, it still counts because you may not win, but the fact that you were nominated in the first place, that means that you were thought of. That's the whole point. Nobody wants to see how they're all, all their hard work just goes down the drain. So it's like when one of your people win, we all win. That's how you have to look at it. Okay. So again, Latinos, they're not represented enough. And they said that we have like, for example, a lot of studios and in the Latino area. And it's not fair because it's like you have that part of their community, but you're not represented and representing them from their community, if that makes any sense. And shows even like the Oscars, for example, uh, had a lot of different situations. Like there was one thing trending on Twitter called the hashtag the white Oscars. And there has been more complaints because the Oscars does the same thing as the Emmys. And a lot of people think actually the Oscars are worse. And when all this was happening back in like 2016 and 2018, the Ox- the Oscars have actually pledged to do the same thing. And the the company in charge of the Oscars is actually the Academy of Motion Picture and Motion of Motion Picture Arts and Science. And uh, they said that they are going to try and increase the membership and the film community and trying to induct more representation for all races, all colors. And another big thing, big thing too, is is also the gender. Because even though we are going to reflect more representation, we have to remember that a lot of women are still being underpaid compared to male actors or just male performers. And that also needs to change. Of course, it seems like everyone always forgets about women last, but that's okay. (laughs) That's okay. We will get there. Okay. We will get there. So again, I mean, it's it's not about a pity party. It's not about victimization and being sad and politics. The Emmys, again, is just a place where what all the hard work has come to and they can finally dress up for the evening. This is how I look at award shows overall, but they can finally dress up for the evening. Maybe drink some wine, some champagne, pop some bottles, who knows, okay? And they can see their other celebrity friends and they can appreciate each other's creativity and hard work and appreciate each other's background, no matter where they, where they come from and just appreciate what they do. I, I just, I admire that because again, it's not just about celebrities in life. You can do the same thing at the job and the, or the career that you currently have and learn more positivity among your colleagues among your coworkers, and I feel like being on these award shows like anyone that gets awarded in life this is what you want to do you want to celebrate what you have done with the cast with the crew with your director your executive producer um first assistant director whoever it is whoever it is okay like the full cast because at the end of the day without the cast and crew where would you be on that show where would you be for that movie where would you be for that music album? You need the workers. You need the people that especially are working behind the scenes. And even if it's not the main protagonist or antagonist that gets nominated, a lot of times I notice too that when we have like the directors and producers receiving awards, it's amazing because they are appreciated as well for their work. And a lot of times that also reflects towards the screenwriter and the person that came up maybe with the series in the first place. So it's a little something to think about, okay? So you may have watched the Emmys on last night. So again, definitely let us know what your reviews and your opinions are. And coming up next after the break, we will get into the newest bisexual character of the show Our House on Disney Channel. You don't want to miss it. 
Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back from the break, everyone. Woo! Okay. So, again, coming up later in the show, I have a surprise for y'all, so please stay tuned, okay? Fall is here. All right. So, up next, if you're now tuning in with us, we recently just finished talking about the Emmys and my opinions and everything that's been going on and how the Emmys is more diversified now since the past 10 years. I would like to now get into... Uh, Disney, who also just made uh, a recent groundbreaking uh, barrier, uh, released their first bisexual character in this TV show on Disney Channel called Owl House. And it's a Disney Channel animation. It stars Luz Noqueta, who is 14 years old. She basically goes to another world to train as a witch. And the show shows how bisexual she is because she's attracted to male characters, but she also has a very explorative relationship with the other character on this series called Amity. Amity basically acts as Luz to Grom, and Grom is basically prom for them in their world, and they have a dance together. So Disney Channel, at first, one of the Disney leaderships, and they were not named, they said to the creator that they weren't sure about having any gay, bi character or queer. She actually got the approval from higher ups in the Disney company to actually go ahead with this show. And her reason was she is bi as well. And she, I, like, you have to understand, she definitely wants to reflect that in her craft, in her work. And I know I keep saying she, but dun dun dun, the creator is Dana Terrace. Yes. So again, like I said, she's also the creator is by of this TV series and she wanted a show where other bisexual uh, girls or young women can relate to the show. And that's very important whenever you're creating any type of series. If you all know what's interesting, um, recently the movie Onward that came out on Disney Plus, for example, because this is not the first time that Disney has done something like this in regards to anything with the LGBTQ community. Officer Specter, which is on the sh- which is in the movie, is actually qualified as a lesbian. And we have the show Andy Mack, which is actually the first show on Disney Channel that has a gay character. And then we also have a short film that they recently did called Out. And this also has a gay character, and that is on Disney+. Plus. But for some reason, um, this TV show, Owl House, is not on Disney Plus as of yet. But you can actually watch the show on Hulu, Fubo TV, YouTube TV, Sling, Amazon Prime, but just not on Disney Plus as of yet. I don't understand. If you're into comedy or comedy horror, fantasy, this is the show for you. The show was actually released January 10th, 2020. But recently, information and new insight has come out August um, in regards to the groundbreaking news that Disney has done. And Luz is, again, the antagonist of the show. And it's strange because she doesn't actually have any magical abilities, but she discovers a portal. And the way the show goes is she meets a witch named Ida and a warrior named King. And then 
she becomes Ida's apprentice. So she still has a dream of becoming a witch, even though she has no powers whatsoever. So if you watch the show Good Girls, or if you're currently watching it, the actress Mae Whitman, she actually plays MT on this TV show. And she was also in the movie The Duff, if any of you recall that. Ida, of course, is played by Wendy Malick. You may know her from Hot in Cleveland, the physical comedian queen. She's hilarious. I know I've seen her in other like shows and movies as well, but like I just wanted to point out those two projects that these separate actresses have done that you may have noticed or know them from. It makes you just wonder um, as to why and who exactly was in the Disney leadership that didn't want the original creator to actually come out with anything gay or bi. But again, it was specifically for the Disney Channel, but not Disney in general. So I'm really glad she got the attention and the permission she deserves from those Disney higher-ups. Again, they were not mentioned, the names, from the research that I have done to actually go ahead and continue with the programming of the show. And for some reason, like I said earlier, that... The Owl House is actually not on Disney+, Plus, but the first season just came to a close since it first aired in January. So, again, it first premiered on Disney Channel. So, since The Owl House is on Disney Channel, it's only natural that fans will turn to Disney+, Plus to stream the new hit series. But, of course, it's not on there. So, if you're wondering when that show will be on there, they're thinking that... It 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 was it will be sometime soon because if you've noticed if you've watched like movies and TV shows on Disney Plus or anything that is among National Geographic, Disney, Pixar, uh, Marvel, Stars, whatever the case may be, there's a certain time that everything comes out, and sometimes it does not come out right away. But I am glad that Disney is doing something like this because this also, again, this is another groundbreaking barrier where we can now finally open up to be open to more shows, especially that kind of reflect a lot of kids. Again, because the character Luz, she is 14 years old. And of course, there's a lot of 14 year olds out there who probably are still trying to figure themselves out. And maybe they still don't know or maybe they're not okay with coming out yet as gay, as bi, as whatever the case may be. So to have representation of this at a young age, like when I was growing up, I did not see anything like this really on TV. And if you did, it was honestly frowned on upon because of my religious background that um, my family was basically traditional on. Me personally, I do not follow the same traditions. We all have a mind of our own when we get older. So when I see TV shows like this, it makes me very, very happy and content because I'm happy that at least there is some representation out there for those of you who are in the same shoes as Luz. And to see it on Disney Channel, Disney Channel, again, is one of those conglomerates, first of all, that a lot of kids grow up on. If you listen to my last, my previous episodes, I talk a lot of times about Disney and Disney for me, I mean, I grew up on that as well. So when I hear that you have more shows like this and you have more stories like this, it finally makes you appreciate, okay, well, I'm not a child anymore, but the fact that someone else's story is being told, like, it's just amazing. And they're doing a wonderful job with it because a lot of people are hooked on this show. It actually, season two is is not premiered as of yet. Uh, They haven't even done a trailer yet. But season one was just wrapped up last month. So it's been a pretty long season from January to August 29th. Disney also has the app called Disney Now. So for those of you who may not have cable anymore, or if you do have cable, of course, you're watching Disney Channel. But if you don't have cable, you'll be watching the app Disney Now. Disney now, I believe, is a little bit more pricier than Disney Plus, but that is where you can watch all the Disney Channel shows, and that is exactly where you can watch Our House. And of course, you can also watch it on Hulu Live TV, and you can also watch it on the regular Hulu app as well. And if you want to buy the individual episodes, the entire season one, basically, you can watch it on Amazon Prime. So it's very interesting. 
at least you still have other options of where to watch it until they finally put it on Disney Plus. So hopefully it's soon. Hopefully it doesn't take any longer. But let's talk a little bit more about the show. So literally, okay, we have a 14 year old girl who is bisexual, okay, and she wants to train as a witch. And she doesn't have any type of power abilities, but she stumbles across this portal and gets into another world, becomes Ida's apprentice. Like, I have to actually still watch the show myself. I only know bits and pieces of it from, like, a couple episodes I saw, but I want to watch it, like, fully. And, again, I feel like even though it's probably, like, a show that's direct towards kids of this age group, It's something even me at 23 years old, like I can watch and still enjoy. And it's because I love things about other worlds, about space, about powers. It's just amazing. And also, this is a perfect show to watch right now too because we're getting into fall. We're getting into the Halloween season. I mean, for those of you out there who are decorating your house, the interior, the exterior, some people even go as far as the cars, For those of you planning to throw your Halloween get-togethers and your parties and stuff, you know, throughout the next couple months, it's amazing. So, again, you definitely want eventually to have that TV show to watch that will reflect Halloween and get you into the mood, get you into the spirit. So, with all the different smells and tastes and everything that comes with Halloween... Well, we have to use our other senses, our eyes. (laughs) Okay, I mean, me personally, I love, love, love Halloween. So I can watch this because, again, this is the Halloween season. So, no, a month and probably, yeah, some change. Yeah. (laughs) So, again, comedy horror. I never really watch that genre too often, but if you like horror, if you like comedy, I'm sure it'll work out. I think they only say comedy horror because uh, it's mixed with the two. So, and they want to make sure that you know that it's not like just straight horror where it's like, wow, my kids can't watch this. So they add that comedian side to it, which is going back to our comedians like earlier today in the show. And I love that Amity is played by Mae Whitman. She is a great actress as well as Wendy Malick. I mean, again, they're talking about comedy here. And based on the projects that I've seen these two actresses in, well, they're pretty funny. So the cast and crew definitely fit, I feel like, for this show. Again, I still have to sit down there and fully watch it. Like things like the words uh, Grom, for example, it makes me very curious as to, in detail, like what exactly is this world like made of? Like who's in this world? And another character that makes me curious is the young... King, the the one that calls himself King, he's the young warrior, and apparently he's like really small on the show, and that's how they describe him. So I definitely want to see uh, what his character does throughout this season. So anyway, coming back up from the break, I will finally, 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 finally tell you the top shows that you can watch right now for Halloween to get you in that spirit, to get you in that mood, and not just Halloween, but the top shows that are trending right now and the top movies but we're not going to get into movies right now so just stay tuned coming up right after the break we got it want to find out what movies to go see then check out the gsmc movie podcast it's your ticket to the latest movies what's your ticket to the latest movies whether it's a new blockbuster event romantic comedy or action flick this show has got it all covered they talk some what to go see now don't bother what's hot on netflix and everything in between that's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast when it's all about the movies it has to be this new show don't forget Forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back from break, everyone. I hope everyone is having been having a good time so far. 
Uh, so we're wrapping up our show tonight. So again, thank you so much for listening. So of course, recap, we if you're now coming into the episode, we just finished discussing about the first bisexual character on Disney Channel from the TV show called The Owl House. And again, you can go watch that on the Disney Now app, not Disney Plus, but Disney Now, Hulu, and enjoy. Up next, the moment you've been waiting for, I promised you all, I will be going down the list of 10 episodes that will get you into the Hollywood mood, Halloween mood, and it's based off of different shows, of course, because I'm not just going to give you 10 episodes from one show. No, we don't do it like that here. And I will also be letting you know of upcoming TV shows that will be coming out for the fall season. So if you're excited for that, here we go. So, ah, you may have noticed all the Halloween decor, pumpkin spice in the air, children at play or in their books for school, the beautiful autumn leaves as you drive, the countdown to Halloween has begun and fall is finally here so no more summer folks i'm sorry okay up next we have how i met your mother and i quote the slutty pumpkin unquote you can watch this on hulu or amazon prime then we have the simpsons as we all know the simpsons is on disney plus but the episode you want to watch to get you into the halloween mood is treehouse of horror again you can watch this on disney plus Fox, Sling TV, YouTube TV, Fubo TV, Amazon Prime. Next, we have Parks and Rec. Oh my God, this show is hilarious. The show has been on for years. And the episode you will want to watch for this is called Halloween Surprise. You can watch this on Netflix, Hulu, Philo, Amazon Prime, YouTube TV, Sling TV, and Comedy Central. Now, Comedy Central, I don't really use this app too often. I should, though. Because it's actually free with cable TV. So for those of you who have cable. And I believe Comedy Central is now an app as well. So you can definitely watch it on there for free. Then we have Stranger Things. Yes. The phenomenal TV show that was on Netflix. To me personally for this one on my list. Stranger Things honestly you can watch the entire show. And it will be all Halloween themed related anyway. Because of how weird the show is, and it's sci-fi, and it's fantasy, and it's horror maybe for some people. Who knows? But not for me. Not for me. So yeah, the episode you want to watch for this is Trick or Treat. Freak. Yeah, I said it. Trick or Treat. Freak. Trick. Okay. It's on Netflix. (laughs) Then we have Friends. Oh my gosh. I swear, Friends has its own cult. People are in love with this show and feel like it should come back one day for all you true fans out here. Yes, I am one too. Anyway, we also have the episode called The One with the Halloween Party. And that is an episode you can watch on Friends, but you're probably going to watch all the seasons anyway because you're a fan. We also have The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Will Smith in the house. Okay. Recently, by the way, I want to give you all an update on uh, that show. They're actually doing a uh, reunion. And Will Smith and, of course, the first female lead that played Aunt Vib had finally, 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 after so many years, especially since the show has ended, especially since she was no longer playing Aunt Viv and they switched the two women And she was a darker, um, black-skinned female, and they changed it to a younger, lighter-skinned female on the show. And there was a whole bunch of different rumors and controversies over the years. Yeah, let's not get into it. But the point is, they're okay now. They're cool. And their reunion is happening soon. Okay. Then we have American Horror Story, which is Murder House Halloween. So you can watch that on Netflix and Hulu. I recommend Netflix because Netflix is just awesome with American Horror Story. We have The Office. Literally, it's just called Halloween. That's the episode. That is also on Netflix, YouTube TV, Sling, Fubo, Philo, Comedy Central. Okay. Again, with the Comedy Central, that is for free with cable TV. Then we have Modern Family. 
also titled Halloween. You can actually watch Martin Family on the ABC app. And if you're still using cable, you can watch this on ABC. And you can watch this on Hulu and YouTube TV. YouTube TV is starting to get more and more popular with these TV shows. I'm telling you. I might need to get a subscription myself. Okay, and last but not least, we have Frasier. Frasier is an older TV show, and the episode is also tied to Halloween. You can watch it on Hulu, CBS, Fubo, and Philo. Fubo TV, by the way. Uh, CBS also is another app with a subscription that you can now watch. And, of course, you can probably watch CBS on cable. But the app is pretty cool. Um, A lot of, of course, all the CBS TV shows are on there. Um, like, for example, Star Trek Next Generation, you can watch that on there as well. So right now, though, that is trending for this week. And it came out a couple days ago. Ratchet on Netflix right now. It came out September 18th. We have the beautiful actress, Sarah Paulson. You may know her also from American Horror Story. She's played so many different characters uh, I believe she was also in, oh, I can't think of it right now. I think she was in Split. I'm pretty sure she played the doctor. I'm trying to think of a recent movie that she has done. But yeah, she actually is playing the nurse from the movie. For those of you who have seen The One Who Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. And basically she's the nurse that torments Jack Nicholson's psychiatric patient. So they're doing, they basically did a prequel for this TV show um, based off that movie. And it's very interesting. It's very suspenseful, thriller, horror type of show. Uh, right now, it's actually number one in the U.S. On Netflix, you can go watch that right now. You can binge the whole entire season. So go ahead and do that right now as we speak. Okay. And I like the fact that I don't see a lot of this, but I like the fact that they did an old classic movie story and um, basically made an entire TV show based off that one character, the prequel. So they want you to see, I guess, her side of the story based on that movie. So if you're a big fan of that movie, you definitely want to watch this show. You don't want to miss it. Only here you get these updates, y'all. Only here. The Walking Dead. Oh, you didn't hear me. Okay. The Walking Dead, y'all. Okay. The Walking Dead has finally had their second spinoff. I mean, this show is just doing amazing. I've never heard of a TV show having a second spinoff. You have maybe one spinoff, maybe, maybe two. Like, for example, um, in my previous episode, we talked about Legacies, Vampire Diaries, and the originals. So, again, Vampire Diaries was the first in that that flagship. And then we had originals, and then we had Legacies. But because the show, all three of them have done great. So The Walking Dead, of course, is another TV show. And again, when it's reflecting around zombies, I mean, you can't go wrong there. And this is also another show that you can watch to get you into the Halloween mood, I would say. Even Ratched, because Ratched, again, has like that suspenseful thriller type of feeling. And those are the things we definitely want to watch from now up until at least like November uh, to get us into the spirit, at least until like a little bit before Thanksgiving starts. So, yeah. But yeah, The Walking Dead, it's actually called World Beyond. And actually, this show comes out on October 4th. So definitely mark that on your calendars. Again, this is the second spinoff TV show. And the 11th season of the original show, though, it did not come out with a premiere date yet. So we're all staying tuned for that because The Walking Dead has literally been on for so many years and... It's like, how can you not be a fan of this show? I mean, ugh, it's just amazing. And one of my favorites, okay? Now, if you know me by now, especially listen to my episodes, I love Star Wars. Yes, I literally have a tattoo of a red lightsaber on my right wrist, okay? I love, la, 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 love Star Wars, okay? So last year, or well, actually, sorry, yeah, I believe it was last year or like earlier this year. I can't remember, but everybody was raving about Baby Yoda, Baby Yoda, Baby Yoda, Baby Yoda. And for those of you who are not Star Wars fans, okay, a lot of people used to come up to me and they were like, oh my God, so that's not like, you know, when he was like a baby. 
like the actual Yoda. I'm like, no, the real Yoda is dead. He is a freaking Jedi spirit right now, okay? A, a, a ghost force spirit. He is not alive. This baby Yoda, if you actually know the storyline of Star Wars, God damn it, and if you actually know the show, okay, this is around the time when literally, um, and I don't want to go too much into the Mandalorian. No, I'm not doing it. But this is when, like, Darth Vader was, like, at large still, okay? So, like, actually, no. This is actually when Kylo Ren was a baby. So, like, if you if you know the new Star Wars series, okay, and you see everything about Kylo and Rey and everything like that, like, these are new um, characters. And at this point in time, this is when, actually, Leia and Han have a son named Ben, Ben Solo. And then he later calls himself Kylo Ren. So the Mandalorian actually takes, in the timeline, it actually takes place when literally he's a little boy. So he's nowhere near Kylo Ren yet. He like, this is when he's like now growing up. He probably honestly didn't even start his Jedi training yet. Again, he was like maybe like between the ages of like three and five years old. Like he's still a baby, okay? And uh, Rey is not even born yet. Because Kylo is actually older than her. So she's not even born yet. So that whole situation that happened, if you did watch the uh, Rise of Skywalker, the last installment to that last series, uh, Rey was actually uh, taken, not really taken away, but her parents kind of gave her up, if you know the story, yada, 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 because her parents were trying to save her from Palpatine, because she's a Palpatine. Oops, I said it. Anywho. So yeah, The Mandalorian comes back out October 30th. Apparently, there have been rumors that the actor that plays The Mandalorian, he actually quit halfway through filming season two. Very unprofessional. What are you doing, Mandalorian? Oh my God. (sighs) But yeah, since the show has come out, again, there has been nothing but memes with Baby Yoda. People have been literally going crazy on the Disney stores and Amazon to get a literally a baby Yoda Bobby as a keychain or cup. Yeah. (laughs) Ah. Okay. So definitely go watch that again. Mark your calendars for October 30th Mandalorian. Woo. Season two. And if you have not watched it yet, it is actually on Disney plus you can watch season one right now. No exceptions. Go ahead and do it before you watch season two. Do not Wait until October 30th to go watch Mandalorian Season 2 and then you have no clue what happened in Season 1. You need to watch Season 1. It's amazing. All right. Last but not least, we have The Crown. The Crown is actually coming back November 15th. It is this fourth installment. You can watch The Crown on Netflix. If you do not know what The Crown is, if you like anything with like historical drama, this is the show for you. So we all know who Queen Elizabeth is, right? And no... I know that you know there is more than one Queen Elizabeth, okay? We have Elizabeth Woodville, for example, from, like, many centuries ago. And we have uh, Elizabeth, like, the famous, famous Queen Elizabeth with the red hair. And she has, like, so many movies about her and stuff like that. But we have this Queen Elizabeth. The woman is still alive and kicking well and has not died yet. This is who I'm talking about. Praise the monarch. Okay, So the crown is specifically about her reign and literally like she is one of the longest living monarchs. Like it's amazing and reflects on like everything that she has done. And it kind of starts off actually when she is married uh, to young Prince uh, Philip from like a young, 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 young age. So probably like her 20s. And then when she first started having children and it starts talking about her, um, rest in peace, her uh, sister as well, and her parents. So I like how this show basically gives like an entire background story on our current Queen Elizabeth. So for those of you who actually love historical, um, especially when it comes to like England, Spain, France, Ireland, um, my next episode is actually going to be focused on the Tudors, the Tudors family of England. So stay tuned for that. It's again... I will get all the historical facts for you all who are into that type of stuff. But there are a lot of TV shows that reflect on 
England and all these different countries and all these different monarchs. So if you're into that, stay tuned for that next episode, okay? But again, that was all we have for you tonight, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, get ready for the fall. It's getting colder and colder out there, so stay warm, okay? And I'm talking from the northeast, Pennsylvania, so that's why I say this. For those of you listening, it may still be a little warm where you are. Lucky you. But hey, so have a good night. Again, thank you for listening to the GSMC TV show podcast brought to you by the T- the GSMC Podcast Network. I would like to ask that you please remember to subscribe to the show and write a nice review that really, really helps us. Also, if you can please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you and have a good night. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program